expectation values in quantum mechanics and observables in quantum computing. The mathematical formulation of quantum mechanics is built upon the concept of an operator. Quantum computing generally uses matrix mechanics. In matrix mechanics, which is a formulation of quantum mechanics created by Werner Heisenberg, Max Born and Pascal Jordan in 1925, the operators are represented as matrices that can be applied to a state vector. Basically, there are two main functions of operators. They can define the physical properties of the system and the time evolution. Application of time evolution operator describes the time evolution of the state in the vector space. From this perspective, Quantum gates are nothing else but evolution operators, because they are built from the time evolution operators generated by certain Hamiltonian and time by the time evolution postulate. And the physical realization of quantum gates requires the application of external fields, this can be microwave pulses for example, of a certain duration to a physical system characterized by Hamiltonian. And the evolution under this external impact during a certain amount of time results in the fact that the system goes from one state to another. And mathematically, this evolution can be described as an application of quantum gate. Quantum gates are unitary operators and are described as unitary matrices relative to some basis. The second important function of operators is that they can describe the physical properties of the system. For example, Hamiltonian is an operator corresponding to the total energy of that system. Some physical quantities can be measured, and the others cannot. Any physical quantity which can be measured in an experiment is called an observable. And this leads to a very important conclusion. Not every operator is observable, and therefore only some operators can be measured. Typical examples of observables are momentum, spin components, and Hamiltonian, of course. Any observable should be associated with a linear operator on a Hilbert space. The operators should have real eigenvalues, because these are the values that may come up as a result of the experiment. Mathematically, this means that the operators must be Hermitian. So, what do these operators do? Observables in quantum mechanics assign real numbers to outcomes of particular measurements, corresponding to the eigenvalue of the operator with respect to the system's measured quantum state. To understand what it means, let's talk about the measurements. We are going to measure some physical quantity characterized by operator A. Operator has eigenstates and eigenvalues. The eigenvalues of a Hermitian operator A are real, and eigencats of A corresponding to different eigenvalues are orthogonal and form a complete orthonormal set. This means that operator A is observable. If we are talking about a qubit, the observable is a z-component of the spin or an analogous quantity if it's not a spin system. And the operator is Pauli z, which is just a unitless version. I will use a notation for z gate for simplicity. This operator has two eigenvalues, 1 and minus 1, and corresponding eigenvectors, ket 0 and 1. These eigenstates form the measurement basis, which means that we can prepare our qubit in any arbitrary state and present its state vector in terms of the eigencats of z. In other words, the eigencats of observables are to be used as base cats in much the same way as a set of mutually orthogonal unit vectors is used as a base vectors in Euclidean space. This means that whatever the state vector of the system is, it can be presented as a linear combination of eigenstates of A. Let's find the coefficients of the decomposition. First, we multiply both sides of the equation to bra alpha j. And then, we use the property of eigenstates, that they form a complete orthonormal set. 
Hence, coefficients are the inner products of state psi and corresponding eigenvectors. Before measurement of observable A is made, the system is assumed to be represented by this linear combination. When the measurement is performed, the system is thrown into one of the eigenstates of observable A. This process is probabilistic and the probability to find the system in particular eigenstate is a squared absolute value of the coefficients in the decomposition. This is a so-called measurement postulate, which is a fundamental principle of quantum mechanics. When the measurement causes state psi to change into one of the eigenstates of operator A, it is said that A is measured to be an A ETH. It is in this sense the result of a measurement yields one of the eigenvalues of the observable being measured. So, measuring an observable is equivalent to projecting the quantum state into a particular eigenspace of the operator. Let's go back to the qubits. We have a two-level system, which we prepared in a state xi, and expressed xi in terms of cat0 and cat1, which are the eigenstates of operator z. And we measure z projection of spin. The measurement result will be either cat0 or cat1, with probabilities defined by beta and gamma. Therefore, if we want to determine beta and gamma, we make a lot of measurements and plot a histogram. Thus, the measurement result tells us what was the measured eigenvalue. And if we acquire some statistics, we get information about what was the state vector before the measurement. Although the result of a single measurement is probabilistic, sometimes we are usually interested in the average outcome. That is the expectation value of A. In quantum mechanics, the expectation value of A taken with respect to state psi is defined in the following way. The physical meaning of mathematical formalism is that the expectation value of A is the weighted average measured value over all eigenvalues. Let's prove it. Let operator A have small n eigenvalues and we performed n measurements of this operator. Then we count how many times each particular eigenvalue has been measured. So A1 was measured n1 times and so on. Thus, the ratio between the number of times when the particular eigenvalue has been measured and the total number of measurements gives us the fraction of times the result is obtained. If the experiment is performed on an increasingly large number of times, in other words, when capital N tends to infinity, we get the probability to measure this particular eigenvalue. The weighted average measurement result is the following sum. Now we can take the limit of this result when n tends to infinity and call the result expected value of the measurement. Then we use the expression above. The next step is to rewrite the squared absolute value and put the eigenvalue in front of cat alpha. This is nothing else but operator A acting on cat alpha. Then we can notice that the sum is taken only over the eigenvectors of A, and this can be done inside the brackets. The resulting expression contains the sum over the outer products of the eigenstates of A. Each outer product is a projector operator. The sum over all projectors on the space is the identity. This is a so-called completeness relation or closure. And finally, we prove that the physical meaning of the expectation value of operator A is the average measurement result. Now we go back to the qubit. If we measure one qubit, which is in the state xi, the expectation value of the measurement result can be calculated in the following way. Therefore, the expectation value of the qubit measurement is the probability to get state 0 minus the probability to get state 1.
expectation values represent the average result of many measurements. However, an arbitrary expectation value can be almost directly measured using a Hadamard test.